Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I'm looking at a little bit more of the Google CTF that went on this past weekend and I want to showcase a challenge that is kind of similar to the stuff that we've seen just before. It's going to be looking at another, another web challenge, but uh, let me pull that up and we'll hop over to my screen here so I can showcase the log me in challenge. So Google CTF was using dynamic scoring and this is a web challenge that got pulled down to about 87 points. So it's not in the 50 point like easy baby beginner category, although that was still really tough for Google CTF because this is a hard, legitimate, crazy cool capture the flag competition. But this challenge prompt just says log in to get the flag. We have an attachment to download. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Looks like it's just a zip file that got pulled down and we have a web page to go explore. First of all, this website is hilarious. I cannot stop laughing at it. Like Life like you've never seen it before for half the price. This product and company Reverse that is revolutionary, a major step in the right direction. Our consultants are to help you to get the right result. If we can't help you, then we can't help anyone. I love this is a hilarious, absolutely boilerplate website that you see in a, a cheesy capture the flag competition. Copy paste 2020, the about page, I can't stop laughing at. Meet the team. This is our lead tech support person, Mike. <laughs> Listen to these amazing testimonials from our premium customer. I've been a customer for a while. Thanks, Michelle. All right, uh, there is a flag location that we can go access, but oh, we must be logged in to access that. Okay, so I see a profile page, but I obviously can't access that either unless I'm logged in. So there's a login page. I can go ahead and try like admin, admin, just as a simple default thing. And that actually logged me in, which is funny. And <laughs> Google will tell me, hey, change your password. Data breach on the site approved, admin, admin. Yeah, that, that's been exposed already. Okay, thanks, appreciate that. I don't need that last pass, get out of here. Thanks. I can go to the flag page, but only Michelle's account has the flag. So that doesn't help me. Somehow I need to be able to log in as Michelle, even though I've logged in as admin, quote unquote. If I could log out, I could try to log in as Michelle, but I don't know her password. So that will tell me, nope, invalid username or password. Okay, so that's me poking around on the web page. Let me actually go look at the source code. And we've downloaded that already, so I'll hop on over to my terminal. I'll move that in the downloads folder. It started with like a seven, and it was a big, big hash thing. So uh, let me move that to logmein.zip. And, oh, sorry, I need to actually include that big hash there. I'll go ahead and unzip that. And now I have an app.js file. Let me open that up. And looks like we have the source code to this web page. So it's seemingly written in Node. This is JavaScript here. Node allowing JavaScript to run server side. And it looks like we're using the Express Engine to go ahead and actually serve these pages. We have a MySQL database kind of being used here. So we require that library. And we use Cookie Session, Cookie Parser, and Body Parser. And we have defined the flag value, but that's probably redacted. That's why they're just using this ellipsis here. And the target user, okay, we saw that already has to be Michelle. Looks like Michelle is the only one that can actually see or read the flag. We're getting UUID. Okay, so we can have some identification numbers. We start up the Express Engine, let that run. And we're using Cookie Parser with a session V value. And okay, okay. That's also redacted seemingly. And we use body parser with extended set to true. That's peculiar actually. Um, I noticed and we've had some conversations about it over in the comments for the pasteurized video or the pasteurized video. The first thing that I did with Google CTF and the gimmick that we're able to go ahead and send those HTTP parameters or the variables that we pass along to the web page. The reason we can pass those as an object is because this extended value for body parser is set to true. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find any documentation on that. Body parser extended true or false. Looks like there's a thing. URL encoded extended equals true does the same for URL encoded request. The extended true value precises that request body will contain values of any type instead of just strings. And there are some articles about this. So let me zoom in on this real quick. Looks like that is the exact same knowledge and statement sentence that I just read. Okay, Chrome, I zoomed in a little bit too much. That can parse data like text and JSON. What do these other pages say? Extended. 
Body parser, URL encoded, my face is kind of in the way and this page is doing weird things. The extended option allows choosing between the parsing the URL encoded data with query string library when false or the QS library when true. The extended syntax allows for rich objects and arrays to be encoded in the URL encoded format, allowing for JSON-like experience with the URL encoding. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Same thing here. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I wanted to go down that rabbit hole just to kind of I'll offer some background and more understanding as to what that is and what it's doing and why that's peculiar. And we will also be using that sort of thing in this video. So app.use looks like that's going to end up requiring the session username and flag. Oh, it's just pulling out. Okay. What it's, pull, what it's grabbing from the session response and request here and some forwarding protocol with HTTPS. Yeah. Is it running with HTTPS? It is funky middleware CSRF tokens. Oh, well, did we actually have a CSRF token? Like if I view the source of this web page, I just hit control U on my keyboard. I actually noticed kind of tinkering with this, there is a hidden element or an input type that is a CSRF or a cross-site request forgery token, but it doesn't have a value set. Like if I were to go ahead and open up my network tab, if I send in like, hey, please subscribe, cool, cool, cool. I get this login post request that I just sent along with my please sub and please sub username and password, but CSRF is actually nothing. Uh, I thought that was interesting it didn't have a value for the cross-site request forgery token, whatever. <laughs> no cache, auth middleware, authorization. Okay, okay, that's just making sure that we're logged in when we need to be. We have some routes for logout, about me, etc. There's the flag, it's just gonna render whatever template is there. Log in, we'll retrieve these, and oh, okay, this is a interacting with the database, so maybe this will be interesting. Select all from users where username equals a question mark and question mark, and we're filling that in with the username and password objects that are sent. Uh, these look like parameterized sentences, or excuse me, parameterized queries, parameterized statements, where we can actually just fill in these values and hopefully avoid SQL injection because it's kind of parameterized and prepared after the fact. Good, good, good. If username lowercase is equal to target user, then it sets the flag to the flag value. Otherwise it says, okay, only Michelle's account has the flag. And that's what we saw when we logged in as admin. So that is interesting that logic there, because this is JavaScript, uh, I just recently showcased one of the previous videos on prototype pollution. Maybe that could be an alternative because this username object could be something, oh, that's pulled from the database. Maybe that's a thing. We would just need to be able to log in, which we are, uh, but then we would need to overwrite or change the prototype of this to lowercase value and set that to Michelle. Then we could try and do that flag value. That's an option and that's a thing. Um, but I want to kind of pivot back to our body parser URL encoded trick and gimmick because maybe we could try and bypass a login if we actually sent an object through, right? So let me see if I can do that with curl. This will kind of be a kind of a guess or like shooting from the hip here. Let's use the post method. So curl tack X and I'll specify data of username to equal like John. And I'll specify another argument for password to equal password, whatever. That will return for me. It says invalid username or password. That's totally fine. We expected that. But if I were to change this and use that HTTP object or pass in like an array or, or thing here. Will that give me any extra results? Error invalid username or password. No, that's not right. Alert times. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, how about password? Anything, whatever. We'll just fill in a value for that. See if that will actually do something different. Oh, unknown error. Error, error, bad field error, unknown column, anything in the where clause. That's peculiar. How is that happening? 
we can take a look back at the source code here. Where's that login function? Select all from users where username is equal to this thing and password is equal to this thing. So password we've just passed in, but now it's an object and we pulled it out of that. Is it reading that like a column? Password is equal to anything. Where is it, is it, huh? That'll like parameterize out like password is equal to anything is equal to that? Or does that just take the place of that column? Username is equal to anything and password is equal to. What if I use something where I know a column actually exists, like username? Password username is equal to that? How does that look? No, invalid username or password. Can I use that? Oh, sorry, I'm just fumbling around on my keyboard. What if I set that for uh, anything? No, I wanna use a real thing, username. Username of username, that still prompts me to log in. Do I need to use like admin? Still invalid username or password. Okay. How about password username? Can still gets me a login. Um, admin admin. That still does weird stuff. Okay. What does that need to be? Username is equal to admin. Username equals, or user, or, oh, wait a second. If we set username to Michelle, Michelle, is that the right spelling? Yeah, it is. Username, username equals Michelle. That also fails. We still have our login prompt. Password of username is equal admin. Can I set that to like nothing? Password still requires a login. What about username, password of password is equal to that? No, okay, there's gotta be something that does this. Username is equal to Michelle and password of username. Oh, wait, what just happened there? We set, going back to our code, we set username to Michelle and use, and we're using this object here to denote a column. What? And username is equal to, and username is equal to password? How did that work? Did I actually log in? If I use that curl tack L, will that send me along there? Nope, I can't post that, so that post method is gonna keep with it. Let me just do a simple Python script here. So classic shebang line, user bin environment Python. And then let's import requests because we're gonna be doing some request things. Let's grab this URL from that web page. I just copy and pasted that. I'm actually gonna remove that login suffix there so I can do requests. Actually, let me create a session because if we're gonna log in requests, dot session and then for good practice let's go ahead and close that we'll set that r like response variable to equal to s dot post of the url with the login page and data can equal username set to i guess michelle in that case and password can be like literally anything i think Let's go ahead and print out that r.txt, see if that gets us anywhere. That still requires me to log in because I didn't do any funky uh, object passing there in that syntax. Let me set that to HTML so it's a little bit easier to you, for you to read. There we go. Um, so password as an object needs to have something set. Username can be set to anything. There we go, okay. But, and that doesn't matter what it is. So password is equal to you. I'm still a little confused as to how that's working, but I guess whatever, an, an auth bypass is an auth bypass. So let's now, because we're logged in, just go ahead and s.get URL over to that flag location that we know is there. We can see that. So let's go to flag and move that r.txt. There we go. 
CTF, a premium effort deserves a premium flag. That's nice. That's cute. Okay, cool. We can submit that and get some points. I want to learn a little bit more as to how and why that's working. So again, I always offer like transparency and truthfulness and hopefully honesty. And, and hopefully that jives well with you guys. I don't want this to be a boring, stupid thing. We're like, John, you're just showcasing someone else's write-up. Mm, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's boring, but we're all trying to learn. Uh, I'm trying to learn especially. So that, I mean, that whole tidbit of knowing that that body parser extended equals true thing like allows this kind of gimmick to happen where we can pass an object along through. But how does that look when it's going to be taking the place of this original parameterized like SQL query here? U and P are the objects that we pass through. Are they also just being set to something? Like, I, I want to see if some write-ups cover that. So if, if you wanted to see the solution to the CTF challenge, I mean, like, this is it. You could do any other field that will pass through and that should and that should still work. Um, maybe did that, did that not work? Spit that guy out. Does it have to be password and username? Yeah, so that fails. Password of username because we've set that to a value that already exists. Maybe that's why. Maybe it has to be something that's valid. So if I were to log in with admin, that doesn't work. Why? Password, password to be anything. Still doesn't work. But when I use Michelle and I set the username to anything, that works. So I want to figure out how that is happening. Okay, enough tangent, sorry. Uh, for, for those of you that wanted to see the solution to the challenge, it's that syntax. It's using username to that target user and then passing in kind of a, a key for this object because we're passing in password as an object value, no longer just a regular string. Because that body parser has extended set to true, we can use that syntax where we're specifying a different column. And you saw that when I just ran a test of like anything, we got that funky error, bad field error, unknown column, anything in the where clause. So because this is taking place in the where clause, I wonder if it's doing like, if it's changing this. Hmm. Let's look at some of the write-ups and explore this a little bit more. But if you wanted to stop watching, because, okay, cool, we got the flag, you can totally do that. Let's go to CTF time. Let's take a look at the Google Capture the Flag event, and I'll click on these event tasks and write-ups here. And I want to look for log me in. So I have no shame, and let's open up literally all of these write-ups. <laughs> see what this guy does, see what this guy does. That opens it in a new window, and I don't want it to. We'll just remove all those. Okay, log me in. So let's kind of learn a little bit from the pros. This is the web page that we saw. We logged in with admin admin, but only Michelle's account can get this. So we observed the session cookie. Oh, the cookie actually. Oh yeah, that, that's what it sets. And you could see that in the source code here when it pulled that out with the locals and things. It's grabbing the session and that's apparently just something that's actually set in the cookie. The app.js attached in the description contains the same flaw as the pasteurized challenge where we're using that body parser extended equals true. So you could specify actual objects and set values in there or set keys where you could be using an actual column name from the database. The administrator user is different from admin. Did that work? This allows us to log in as Michelle without providing a password and retrieving the flag from the cookie. Okay, so they did the exact same thing. We're, they're setting Michelle as a username and the password is going to be a valid password value set there will be an actual valid column name. Will that do the exact same thing? ID. That logs in just fine. How about password? That doesn't log in just fine. I wanna understand why that's happening. 
the username does. So anything that's not the column already, it's already being queried. Okay. Mm. Ooh, this challenge exploits the fact that we send an array, which when parsed makes a SQL server execute a similar query to this. Select all from users where username is equal to Michelle and password single, like backtick password is equal to one. How does that work? What are these backticks? And that's that. Okay. So I guess I understand that that syntax happens, but like MySQL pass object. That is just inserting into the database with the names that are being set there. But if they aren't using names, what happens? That I guess is the closest thing that we've seen though thus far to an actual answer, but all right. I know this is becoming a long video and me wandering around the internet probably isn't all that entertaining. So we can stop this pretty soon, but I'm just kind of exploring everyone else's write-ups to see what's going on here. Hello is set to A, if we're using that body parser object. Wait, set. We can see that objects are converted into a comma separated attributes. We know that username is supposed to be Michelle, but we do not know the password. So what we can do is try and pass an object in the place of a password with the known attribute. That would make sense. I think that's the most logical thing where we're using, okay, username is gonna be Michelle and password comma username is gonna equal Michelle. So and password will probably evaluate to true because that's just existing as a column and the username is gonna equal that thing. Maybe that's how it should be parameterized out. Does that how it is that how it looks like in the syntax? So going back to it, we would have username set to Michelle and password username equals Michelle. Or that's so funky. And password Okay, that's enough. That's enough of me musing at that. I know this video got super boring and stupid at the end. But, uh, that's my process of learning and exploring and walking through and trying to see and learn a little bit about this. But I really, really do recommend going to check out these write-ups, especially after a Capture the Flag competition. I'm really excited to go look through some of the stuff for the F-word CTF that went on this past weekend. So, okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I hope you didn't mind me falling down the rabbit hole there at the end. That's me shooting from the hip and just trying to explore and learn and tinker with this. But I, I think the real takeaway is that with that body parser extended set to true, there might be some interesting things you can do and, and gimmicks and wrenches you can throw with passing in an HTTP like object or array there or something different than a regular string. So that's enough. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press that like button, do the YouTube algorithm things, maybe leave me a comment, maybe subscribe. Super duper grateful if you do. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.